Gabriel Tabrin, Life as a Vocation, Beliduk, Designing Vocation. I can testify with a deep sense of gratitude that I have had the satisfaction of being the son of Christian parents who brought me up according to the principles of religion. From my childhood, my inclination was to be a catechist, to decorate the churches on feast days, to assist the priests in the ceremonies of worship, to teach the young people in the schools, all functions to which I have devoted myself with zeal from a very young age. I declare that from my adolescence, I felt a very special inclination towards religious life. My only aspiration was that the time would come when I would have the opportunity to consecrate myself to God in that step. When I reached the age of 16, I was chosen to carry out the mission of teacher, cantor, and sacristan in my parish. It was a very modest mission indeed, but I loved it. My vocation to religious life was decided during the mission that took place in St. Claude in 1821, and in which I had the good fortune to take part. At first, my parents were tenaciously opposed to my becoming a religious. They wanted to keep me with them and still hoped that I would resume my studies with a view to the priesthood. But when they were sure that God was destining me for religious life, they gave me the means to embrace it. The time had come, marked by divine providence, for me to leave the world and my people to embrace religious life. Neither the tears of my parents and friends nor the future prospects I had in the world could stop me. So I asked for the blessing of my father, my mother and also of our Savior in the church in my parish. There I shed tears, remembering the graces I had received and the duties I had performed for so long and with so much satisfaction. After saying goodbye to everyone, I went to St. Cloud, and it was there that God, without my realizing it, wanted to show me that He was calling me to lay the foundation of the Institute of the Holy Family. His will was manifested to me through Bishop Anthony Jacques de Chamon, who also encouraged me to approve my plans. It was he who gave me the holy religious habit, along with five other young men who had joined me. I solemnly took the holy religious habit in 1824, on the second Sunday of October, in the church of Bochok, an hour and a half's walk from my home village. At least 8,000 people gathered for the occasion. My family and a large number of members of the clergy attended. It would be difficult for me to describe the inner joy I experienced and the beauty of such a moving ceremony in which I was the protagonist and which was totally new in those parts for our people who were, however, so religious. The day was undoubtedly one of the most beautiful and consoling days of my life. I have found memory of it, which has never faded from my heart. Immediately after taking the habit, I returned to St. Cloud with my companions. We were immediately entrusted with the service of the cathedral and the direction of the schools attended by the children of the town. Everything was beginning to work to the great satisfaction of Bishop de Cham. The clergy of the town and myself, as well as the good Christians, who were pleased to see the foundation of an institute very useful for religious and for the people. But 
Unfortunately, these happy beginnings passed as quickly as lightning. My five companions, although at heart good people, became discouraged and left me with another brother in charge of about 300 pupils plus the service of the cathedral and the care of our little house. I endured this humiliation trial with great resignations, saying to myself, if this work is mine alone, it is a work that is still born, but if it is God's work, he will know how to sustain it in the face of all and against all. A thousand circumstances presented themselves to divert me from my vocation. But I can affirm that I had sincerely promised on the day of my taking the habit to give myself to the Lord forever and nothing could divert me. I would have preferred to lose my life first. God wanted this work to pass through this crucible of a great trial followed by many other tribulations which have always been through the centuries the heritage and the mark of the works of God.